In this video, I will do an experiment. The goal of the experiment is to make you and your friends maybe to a better photographer. Hi my friends, nice to see you. You know, I always try in my videos to give as many useful tips as possible, but in this video I want to go even one step further. If you know my YouTube channel, you know it's a tutorial vlog for landscape photography. But today I want to do an experiment with photographers of all genres of photography and also with each level of photography. I even need photographers of each genre, to be honest, so very important. If you have any photography friends, doesn't matter which genre it is, street photography, people and portrait photography, pet photography, wildlife, astrophotography, macro, it doesn't matter. Share this video with your friends, they will have the possibility to improve their photography and if you got invited by someone, I want to congratulate you because in that case you have a really good friend who is interested to help you to get a better photographer. So before we start, a big thanks to PhotographyTalking.com. I'm not sponsored by them or something like this, but they published a really detailed article about me as a photographer. So thank you about that. And they also do photography competitions. So if you're interested in competitions for photography, you should really have a look at them. And also if you want to read the article they wrote about me. This is PhotographyTalking.com. I will link it below the video. So before we start with the experiment, I think it wouldn't work in that way that I only tell you what you have to do that you can participate. I think it's really important that you know the background behind this experiment, how I came to this experiment, what are my thoughts about and so on. So I think it's easier to understand and you also will have more impact through this. So it's really important to watch the entire video and I'm absolutely sure that this will get a really long video. So I thank you already before for watching this long video. So everything started already many years ago. I started with photography around 30 years ago and I did something what I think what most photographers do. I tried different genres. I tried nearly everything I think. The only I didn't try is street photography and nude photography. I think maybe I didn't have enough courage for both of them. But I realized two things. The first thing is many really good photographers stuck already for years in their progress before their progress exploded to world class within short time. And the second thing is each genre of photography has different requirements to get a master in that genre. Obviously there are core requirements, intersections if you want. So maybe the exposure triangle or how the light works, composition and timing, all these elements are relevant for all genres, although not each of them has the same impact in each genre. And each genre has special requirements. So if you watched already some of my previous videos, you know that it's really important to think about emotions in photographs. Because the only reason that you hang up a photograph on your wall or a painting or something, doesn't matter what it is, the only reason that you hang anything up up your wall is that it evokes emotion at the viewers. It could also be that the grandma what hangs up a picture of the grandchild, if it evokes emotions, it's a great photograph and you love to hang it up on the wall. In landscape photography, we use mood of the light of the weather to evoke emotions in the viewers. And it's also a difference which subject we choose or which area we choose to go. We are always driven by emotions. But when you think at people photography, portraits maybe, it gets a little bit more difficult at that part because it's not only the photographer who conveys the mood to the viewer. There is also the model what is photographed and the expression of the model has a huge impact to the viewer, to the emotions which are evoked at the viewer. So the photographer has to influence the model that it is able 
to build up the expression the photographer wants to have. So this is a really special requirement and this is nothing what we do in landscape photography officially. Or when you think at wildlife photography, for example, you have to know everything about the animal you want to photograph. You have to know when it will appear, where it will appear and where it will move after it appeared. And you also have to hide that the animal doesn't see you and doesn't smell you, obviously. So there are also really special requirements in wildlife photography. What about pet photography? Well, it's not done to take a quick snap of a cute pet only. It's all about storytelling of the pet and the context of the situation around. So if you're able to tell a really great story, it will get a really great pet photograph. Street photography, for example, is also all about storytelling. But you have to be careful because you don't want that you get seen by the people you photograph. Because they wouldn't look natural when they know that they are photographed. And you also have to be really fast to build up a composition. So there are so many genres of photography out there. These were only some examples. But doesn't matter. Each genre has any special requirements. Before I come to the special requirements of landscape photography, let me show you some really great photographs of different other genres. These photographs were not taken by myself. Some of my photography friends were so friendly and allowed me to use these photographs in my video. So thank you for that. This is an absolutely delighted photograph of Carsten's cute dog Fred. We are here in bed photography. An amazing storytelling. But the final thing, what makes it to a masterpiece is the composition. We get depth through a low camera position and through a close foreground. We have horizontal lines which block the view back to the distance. What is also supported by the blurred background, obviously. There are thick lines from the corner leading to the subject. And these verticals here bring dynamic into the image, but the viewer is held inside the frame by the thick leading lines above. The colors are amazing. Very simple, only red-brown and a touch of this subtle green up there what also brings a bit of dynamic into the image through a color contrast and an asymmetric behavior of the background. Also the contrast between the subject and the background is just awesome. Finally, the composition is fantastic. So thank you Carsten for your contribution. So let's come to the next photograph. So we are in wildlife photography here, obviously, and Anke Kneifel considered all mentioned specific requirements of wildlife photography, knowing where to find the bird, photographing it without disturbing it, an amazing storytelling, but it gets to a masterpiece also through the composition. The subject is the bird itself, a field fair. It's handled as a big center object, it's not 100% in the center, he used the rule of space. This means negative space at the left adds to the harmonic appearance of this photograph. As we can imagine that the bird has space to fly there. Leading lines from the top right and the bottom left support the flow through this image. And also this triangle at the right bottom is really interesting. It's an harmonic shape, but the bird breaks out of it, what supports that the eyes are drawn to it. Fantastic colors as well, simple oranges and reds, which are analog colors. So this is a harmonic style, but the behavior of the bird contrasts to that harmony as it brings an amazing dynamic in this image. So finally, the composition is amazing. So thank you Anke as well for your contribution. Let's come to the next photograph. Jan Jakusz is a street photographer he considered all mentioned specific requirements of street photography, but also here it got a masterpiece through the composition. We have strong diagonals leading from all corners to the subject. Subject is that man sitting on a bank waiting for a train. We get a fantastic feeling of depth through the vanishing lines and the repeating lamps on the top, which also lead to the subject. What I love most at this photograph is it has a symmetric balanced base composition, what gets broken by the subject itself. The man is not straight in the corner, he is slightly left beside. And this contrast of symmetry and asymmetry draws the eyes 
to the element what breaks out, the man, the subject. By the way, I love to do things like this by myself, by my own photographs, to bring out things out of balance, maybe to cut on positions where you usually wouldn't cut, can end up in a feeling of uncomfortableness and it really helps to bring a mystic touch in the photograph, for example. I also do let break out any element to get the focus on that element. So it's a really great idea what Jan had in this photograph, really a great one. So I really love what Jan did in his photograph. And finally also here, the composition is just fantastic. So thank you Jan also for your contribution. By the way, I will also mention all photographers of these photographs below the video. You will find their Instagram account there. Check them out, they have really fantastic photographs on their accounts. And what I found out over the years in my own experience and also with talking to other photographers, also on my workshops maybe, that the thing what photographers struggle most about is the composition. And the reason for that is it's such a huge topic, there are so many things to be considered. And it doesn't matter on which level of photography you are already, it will never stop that you will be able to improve your ability to build up a fantastic composition. And the experiment I want to tell you here, and I hope you want to join to it, has to do with this. And to be honest, I forgot already about this experiment. I had this idea so many years ago and I thought it were really a great thing when anyone would do such an experiment, never has done something like this before. And I remembered again because some weeks ago there happened something. I load up a video about flower photography. Photographing flowers is not the main interest of a landscape photographer, obviously, also I think Flower photography is a part of landscape photography, a scroll landscape, intimate landscape and the macro world belong to landscape photography. I photograph flowers usually one or two times a year, most in spring, because I think spring is really a great time for photographing flowers. And now it gets interesting. I got reactions to this video I didn't expect. So I got many compliments, thank you for that, but it's really interesting. Photographers from other genres told me that they never thought that a landscape photographer were able to take a portrait shot of a flower. And I thought that's not really difficult. And also really interesting is, I also talked to other landscape photographers and the most landscape photographers I asked told me that it's simple to photograph a flower. So that's really interesting because so many times I heard from photographers, I'm able to photograph everything but I struggle with landscapes. And this brought me that I remembered to the experiment what I thought already so many years ago. What is so different in landscape photography? I thought there must be any reason why a landscape photographer does easier to photograph anything else and why a photographer of other genres struggles with landscape photography. Don't get me wrong, landscape photographers are definitely not the best photographers of the world. But let me tell you what are the main requirements of landscape photography. Well, a landscape photographer has to manage the conditions, means the light and the weather in the one hand, and in the other hand, as we already mentioned, composition is really, really important for each genre of photography. But a main requirement in landscape photography is composition. There are so many things going on in landscapes. There are so many elements, so many things what distract. Lines and shapes are not so clear to find. There are lots of thought lines. When we talk about lines, we often talk about curves anywhere in the landscape. Through very short focal lengths and also through the perspective, lines change and also through the distortion of the lens. In most cases, it's not possible to photograph wide open to isolate your subject from the blurry distance. And the reason for that is, and I think it's also the reason why many photographers from other genres struggle with landscapes, the reason for that is the way how we see. So when we look at the landscape, we can't see everything with one sight. We don't look like a camera. What we do is we look at some different parts of the landscape and our brain stitches them together to a kind of panel, if you want. This is also the reason, by the way, why everyone 
interprets his environment in a different way. So you can test this by yourself if you want. Tell any person he or she should look at the landscape and go beside the person and have a look at the eyes. They will jump around. And now it gets interesting. Street photographers are masters of storytelling. Wildlife photographers are masters of hiding and masters of timing. Portrait photographers are masters of conveying emotions to the model. And landscape photographers are masters of composition. But composition is so important for each genre. And really good photographers of each genre of photography are also really good at composition. And again, the area where photographers struggle most doesn't matter which genre. Landscape photographers, street photographers, wildlife photographers, portrait photographers and so on. The thing where most photographers struggle with is composition. A long video I know. I thank you that you watched to this point. Well, let's come to the experiment. Everyone can participate. Doesn't matter which genre, doesn't matter which level of photography. Everyone can participate and the goal is that everyone will improve his photography. And I make two groups. The first group is for photographers who are no landscape photographers. This is important for group one. Group two will be for landscape photographers afterwards. But also landscape photographers should listen to this part because then you will understand what your part will be. And so here are the instructions for group one. And I would suggest sit down before I tell you. You sit? Well, let's go on. The instructions for you are go into landscape photography for three months or even longer, but I would say three months. And it doesn't matter when you watch this video, you can ever start whenever you want. It's an open experiment. I will present some of your photographs in another video for this experiment, maybe. So don't get me wrong. I don't want that you move from your genre to landscape photography. I want that you do this additionally to your genre. So if you're a street photographer or a portrait photographer or whatever, you will stay a portrait photographer, a street photographer or wildlife photographer, doesn't matter what. The idea of the experiment is that you take advantage of the compositional part of landscape photography and that you implement this into your genre. And I'm convinced you will massively improve your ability to build up amazing compositions. Because in landscape photography we take time to build up a really great composition. This means it could be that I'm there for a half an hour out there, for an hour, for two hours. It could be that I go home, think at home about the composition, that I go back there and build up a really fantastic composition. And so you can imagine if I would try to take a photograph of a nice model, I think the expression of the model could look really tired and bored maybe. So it's, it's really an advantage what you have in landscape photography that your model has always time and is always there when you want to have it. The only thing you want to have in landscape photography are the conditions like light and weather and so on. But this part is not so important for you when you are not a landscape photographer. So you really should concentrate on the composition part. And in the next step you can use this ability in your genre. And I'm really interested how your progress will be after this experiment. It's really interesting for myself. And by the way, that we landscape photographers take time to build up a composition doesn't mean that we are not able to build up a composition very fast. For example, when you have watched my first video what I load up here on this channel, it was hike and shoot, I will link it above. There was the situation that the light felt amazing on a refuge up on the mountains and I didn't have all too much time to think about the composition to be honest. I saw that the sun hit behind the mountains and for a few seconds, it's difficult to say how long it was really, but I, I saw that the light felt amazing at the hut. I threw down my rucksack, grabbed out my camera and while I did this, I thought already about the composition and the only thing I did, I took the exposure. So we landscape photographers are also able to build up the composition very fast. So I also think this is an advantage for street photographers, for wildlife photographers, whatever. Each genre of photography will have an advantage and they were really happy if you would join to this experiment. And I don't want that you buy new gear for this experiment. A normal kit lens is absolutely enough. 
And I'm sure you will have questions about composition and landscape, because as I already mentioned, this is really difficult if you never have done it before. You will find many tips for composition in all of my videos. I pay most attention on composition and also the reason for that is because composition is so important. So if you want to participate to this experiment, just comment below the video that you are in and maybe in, in some weeks or months or whatever, I will show a photograph of you here in a video from me. So let's come to group number two. These are the landscape photographers. So your instructions and I also would say sit down. <laughs> I want that you go into cityscape photography and architecture for three months, maybe also longer. It's up to you. Obviously, you also can go shorter if you want. So if you only want to try for it for one, two or three weeks or something like this. Also for the group one, of course, definitely, you can go shorter. I am really happy if you would give it a try. I'm really convinced it will improve your photography. And what are the ideas for group number two? What are the ideas for landscape photographers? Well, you are a landscape photographer and maybe you are good at composition, but even if you're really good at composition, as I already mentioned, it will never stop that you will be able to improve your photography from the compositional side. So when you go into cityscapes and architecture, you will find lines and shapes much easier than in landscape photography, but you will have other problems there. <laughs> I tried this already by myself. I also photograph cityscapes a couple of times in a year. I really enjoy this. For example, last year I've been to Winice. I took some really fantastic photographs there, although it is not the goal to take great photographs of cityscapes, obviously. It's just a kind of training. And also for the photographers who are no landscape photographers, it's not the goal to get fantastic landscape photographs. So usually that you get out really great photographs, you should photograph what you love. And obviously, when you try now a genre what you don't love, it isn't the sense to get out a really great photograph. The only sense here is to take advantage from this genre, from this training strategy, or let's call it, let's call it a training strategy, and to implement it in your genre. Cityscape photography really helped myself. Whenever I did this, I realized afterwards that I really improved my ability to build up compositions in landscape photography. So I'm really interested about your progress as you will have over the next weeks and months maybe. Please comment below the video if you will give it a try. And as I already mentioned for group one, also for group two, I were really happy about if I could show some of your photographs in my video. I were really happy about. So and one more thing, if you want to participate to this experiment, you can use a hashtag in Instagram. I will show it anywhere here on the screen. Use it for Instagram, for example, so I can always have a look at your photographs, have a look at your progresses, and also the others who watch this video can have a look at your photographs. And maybe I will also show them in one of my next videos. And all these things obviously depend on how many photographers will participate to this experiment. And again, it's really important. Please share this video with as many photographers as possible. Each genre, there are no limits, each level of photography. I were really interested about the results of this experiment. So please share it on Facebook, Instagram, wherever. I were really interested about the result of this experiment. Don't forget to have a look at photographytalking.com. I will link it below the video as already mentioned. And also don't forget to have a look at the Instagram accounts of the photographers who allowed me to use their photographs in this video. Thank you again for this. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If yes, please give it a thumb up. Share this video with your friends on Facebook, Instagram, wherever. Subscribe to my channel if you didn't have already. So thank you so much for watching. See you next Saturday. Thank you. Bye. I'm the landscape you need to see. You are the artist I'll never be. Stay with me and I have no doubt. You'll make a painting that makes you proud